I've got about 20 minutes to walk you through a few things. I'm going to walk you through how we look at our strategy with regard to Unilever for e-commerce. We're going to look at the killer model, which is what we believe to be the grocery model online, and then give you some examples of the work that Unilever is doing around Europe, in North America, and also in Asia. But let me start with this quite uh, bold statement. If you think how you are shopping today, or how your parents shopped, or how your grandparents shopped, the belief that we have in Unilever is where we are now, what we're going to see with regard to e-commerce and the work around many different models, whether it be grocery, single item, drug, marketplace, or vertical models, we really believe that this is going to be the biggest change that we see in retailing in a generation. We really believe that this opportunity that we have in front of us means that an awful lot of power will actually go back to the shopper. The ability for this space to be very transparent and give the shopper, the consumer, a choice and ability to understand a brand and a model has never been like this before. So this is a big statement, the biggest change in retailing we'll see in a generation. The strategy that we have is to get to more people deeper and at lower cost. So when we talk about getting to more people, let me give you two examples. We have a business in China where we sell our products through Taobao. And with regard to Taobao, about a third of the business that we have through that business goes into cities and towns where Unilever has very little distribution or presence of our products. Second example is we're actually starting to take brands from Hindustan Lever in India and sell things like the tea brands that we have there called Taj Mahal into Europe and into North America. So we're starting to take brands from around the world, bring them into e-commerce for people who were maybe born in India or who've been to India, who now live in different parts of Europe or in North America. Key consideration being with regard to e-commerce, it's very much for many models, a warehouse model. So it's not about putting that brand into 500 or 1,000 stores. It's about putting it into one warehouse and shipping it across a whole country. If you look at Amazon in Europe today, in UK, France, and Germany, they ship to 26 countries from three locations. We put our brands into those three facilities, and we hit 280 million people. The deeper, we believe that the experience that we can create with our brands on the retailers' websites can be much more engaging, much more informative than what we can do generally in a supermarket or hypermarket. And the last point about less cost. Many of the products that we create in the packaging is because the product sits on the shelf of the retailer when the shopper walks down the aisle. Or some retailers ask for what's called shelf-ready packaging. And this is extra packaging on top of the product. For e-commerce, we don't need that. So we really believe we can be cheaper and greener. So our vision is to get to more people in a deeper relationship and at less cost. A key consideration, though, for us with regard to e-commerce is what we call ROPA. So research online, purchase anywhere. When we talk to many retailers around the world, they say to us that they believe that maybe for every dollar that is bought in their kind of online store, they're influencing $6 back in the physical environment. So we know that getting our brands to look really great online is a big driver of the online business and also for the in-store, because many people search the brand online and then purchase wherever they want. If we look at what we think is the killer model, we think the killer model is the grocery model for e-commerce. And there's a few beliefs around that. The first one is, if you're shipping a basket of generally 50 to 55 items of chilled, frozen, and ambient, you can start to make money. If you're shipping one or two items to a person's home, it can be very difficult to make money if the average price of the item is maybe three to five euro. But the, the nature of this being a killer model is basically two things. One of them is trust. Within the grocery model in e-commerce, if you're buying the food that you're then putting in the stomachs of your children, you have no higher level of trust 
than that. And the second thing is frequency, which is if you go to certain websites and you're buying books and other products, you may go there once every month, once every two months or whatever. If you look at many grocery models around the world, the average shopper is buying their products every 11 to 17 days. So the frequency of being able to build a relationship, the trust element of the quality of the food, and the profitability means we think the grocery model is the killer. Here you've got a very simple slide of how the shopper starts to engage. We're talking to many retailers around the world now who are saying between 20 and 30% of their orders are coming through a smartphone or a tablet. Remember that most people didn't even start to understand tablets until three or four years ago. So we're looking how the model is actually evolving all the time. Majority still, still comes through a laptop, but the key is the influencing of the tablet and the smartphone is really critical. The next stage is how does a retailer or an online grocer actually pick the product? They can pick from their store or they can pick in a warehouse. The great thing about a warehouse model is that you know what you've sold before you've sold it. Because many people who have families will place an order one or two or three days before they actually have it delivered. So if you're a single male and you live in Istanbul and you go home tonight and there's nothing in the kitchen, who cares? You phone your friends, you go out. If you've got children in your house, your planning of your meals is much higher. So the key is that the retailer can understand what the shopper wants from the warehouse model, whereas in a store model, they're actually competing as they walk around picking with other shoppers. And then delivery to home or pickup. We see about 4% of the French business at the moment for grocery, Carrefour, Auchan, Leclerc, is going through click and collect. That's where the shopper on the way home will pick it up from either a store or what looks like a kind of a drive through McDonald's. We will continue to see an evolution of the grocery model and how it expands around the world. The key, though, is that the online space is the new battleground. Presentation by Dick Bohr. Dick Bohr is the CEO of Ahult, and he presented about three months ago in the US, and his opening slide was, what would you do if all of your growth came from e-commerce? And remember, people like Walmart with nearly 300 billion in revenue, Aholt with like over 110 billion in revenue. These are major businesses that are now starting to look at how do they win in an e-commerce environment. But the game has changed, the, the kind of the, the battleground or where they played has changed because they've now got people like Amazon and Amazon Fresh. We know, and we've all kind of read it, Amazon Fresh, they've been live in Seattle for about five years. They're now live in Los Angeles and San Francisco. We will see more players come into this space of selling kind of CPG. Taobao in China, they sell 26,500 pieces of female clothing per hour. Okay, this is China. It's just an amazing business. And now the key is how they move business models like that from selling apparel and books and whatever into the grocery model. Hopefully you can see this, but basically if you look at the Asda data, Asda Walmart in the UK, this is just to simply answer that question, which is, is online grocery good for a retailer? And is it good for Unilever? So let's answer that first question. If you look here on the Asda Walmart chart, you look at the red bubble, that's simply saying that the average yearly expenditure of a family in a physical Walmart store in the UK is about 837 pounds. If you look at the other side, which is the dot com, it's round about 547. When you combine the two and you end up with multi-channel shoppers, you can see the value is 1600. It's a huge amount more than a silo mentality of managing a customer who shops in store or shopping online. Many retailers today around the world are bringing in omni-channel or multi-channel directors to enable them to understand how do they manage a store business and the online business. So it's very good for driving loyalty to a retailer for online. Question is, is it good for somebody like Unilever? Hopefully, again, you can see this, but let me give you the data points. If you look at the data that talks about Tesco Laundry and Unilever, what it's saying is 18.4% of people that shop in laundry in a Tesco physical store exclusively buy Unilever. 
And on the other side, you have 30.2% of people in Tesco.com in laundry exclusively by Unilever. So, dot com, e-commerce, the grocery model, is a huge driver of loyalty to a retailer and to a supplier. Let me give you some examples of some of the things that we do around the world to try and drive the penetration of our business online and also drive loyalty. So, three examples here, China, UK, and the US. Let's take the US one first. This is an example inside Amazon. Uh, and really what happens is, think about the experience today. The experience today is there's a small pixel of the product, then there's a product name and a price and you can buy. That's not really bringing the brand to life. Here you have a Lipton Tea brand store on the site where the shopper can get videos about how do we pick the product, how we're linked to kind of sustainable elements. So it's really about bringing the brand to life. And with regard to China and Pons, one of our skincare brands there, it's all about how do we drive trial and education and information in an environment where if somebody is on their tablet and they're sitting at home, it's really about giving them much more rich content online through these branded stores. The next one is about connecting with digital. So globally, Unilever is the second biggest uh, uh, kind of spender in media. And the key is we spend an awful lot of money on digital. So what we're doing now is when we do a piece of digital, we're ensuring that we have a buy it now link from the digital copy to the retailer. So the key here is we spent all that money building the awareness, getting the brand proposition across, and now what we're doing is letting the shopper choose which retailer they want to go to to then go on and buy the product. So it's starting to connect the dots. If you think about the old world, we spend money on TV. We hope the shopper goes into a store, maybe a week later, a day later. We then hope they buy a Unilever product. Here, we can go from a piece of touch point on digital and let the shopper there and then go and buy the product. The next point, which is really kind of important for uh, consumer products goods, is kind of launches. So here, what we're looking at is different kinds of launches. So you have the uh, UK example. So we exclusively launched something that we call Dove Spa. It's our premium range of skincare. And what we did is that we launched it uh, in the UK with Ocado exclusively online to really learn. The great thing about it is that when you launch brands in Turkey, it costs millions and millions of euros to launch the brand. You launch it through many different retailers. You then put up the kind of the switch the TV on. Here we can learn an awful lot by just launching it in one retailer online and then seeing how the brand develops and learn. The other, the other kind of key consideration is we also look at how do we pre-sell. So the key for us online is we can give information, we can let people engage with the brand, they can request a sample, and then we can take an order. And then when the product is available to ship, we can ship. Again, versus the old model is we wait for it to go into a hypermarket and supermarket, we switch on the TV, everything is date, kind of, let's say, delayed by one, two, or three months. In this environment, you can pre-launch, you can launch at the same time, or you can launch exclusive. So we really look at different ways in which we can engage our brands with shoppers through kind of execution and launch. And just one of the last points here, this is around, we do a lot of work with uh, eye tracking. And the key for us is, we need to put the shopper at the heart of everything that we do and really understand what is the shopper saying about their interaction with a retailer's site and also our brands within that. So we've built many facilities around the world. We have about nine of them that enables us to do eye tracking of a mobile phone, of a tablet, or a laptop to ensure what we're doing is that we're bringing the shopper right into the heart of what we're doing. So whether a retailer is trying to understand how a person comes in and signs up and places their first order, or how they interact with our promotions, our branded sites and whatever. The key is that we use the eye tracking to really understand the shopper in a better way and start to kind of enable the channel to grow and also our brands. And that was it from me. It's kind of for Unilever, 
E-commerce is uh, one of our two big strategic growth areas. Uh, we actually play now in 12 markets globally, UK, France, Germany, US, China, Japan, India, Canada, Mexico, Turkey. And the key for us is we really need to understand more about how to win in this space. And what we're trying to do is put the shopper at the heart of how we learn to win online. Thank you.